Hey guys, welcome to this presentation. I'm so sad that I can't be with you there, but I had to work. So I'm bringing you 3D printed transmission lines. My name is Ubaldo Robles, and over this presentation, I'll talk about 3D printing and why we're looking to 3D print all the things that you have seen in this class so far. Let's focus on microstrip transmission lines since we are more familiar with them in our daily life. Then we can move on discussing the advantages, challenges, and the future of these particular transmission lines. Transmission lines are in the verge of evolving from what we know right now. Picture a transmission line made of plastic without any metal. Picture it embedded inside the same structures that form electronics. And even at some point, picture them completely different than what you have seen today, with different shapes that can outperform what we know possible today. The story of electromagnetics and transmission lines starts with the evolving of manufacturing technology. 3D printing is proving to be a complete new manufacturing force that will enable us to create new ways to produce transmission lines. And specifically, in this presentation, I will cover the future vision, challenges, and possible solutions to fully manufacture 3D printed microstrip transmission lines. 3D printing has the capabilities of producing devices that can contain electronics with zero added weight and volume. Simply put, picture the electronics being part of the structural components of the device. In the picture shown, you can see a flat piece of plastic, but notice that the electronics are embedded inside the plastic. This method goes around the current way we produce electronics with PCB boards fasteners, cables, connections going all around. Imagine your circuit being part of the structure that holds your car together, or a phone thinner than what we have because the electronics are part of the case body. Picture having an antenna inside your glasses that transmits information to your lens with very little power consumption. What this means for transmission lines is that it opens the envelope of design and construction to the next level of thinking. Usually, when we manufacture, we depend on machining, molding technologies. Now, we can produce intricate patterns that bring new ways of thinking to solve Maxwell's equations, and then we create enhanced transmission lines. How then can we start thinking how then can we think about 3D printing microstrips or transmission lines? Let's start with what we already know. VS and electronics are very common to us as double E's. Modern electronics rely heavily on wireless technology and any new electronic fabrication technology such as 3D printing must handle microwave electronics. Transmission lines are the building blocks of microwave circuits. This was mentioned by Paul Deffenbach, PhD, in double E in his dissertation, 3D printed electromagnetics, transmission, and electronic structures. He mentions how everything that involves microstrips need to contemplate wireless transmission. Then, once we can print microstrips properly, we will have devices that can handle big frequencies, large amounts of data, lots of files, etc., you name it. But the trick is to be able to do those microstrips. Let's talk about how to print them. Is it as easy as pushing the button on a 2D printer and just wait for the page to go out? or in this case, the part to come out? Not really. 3D printing with its new use of the C-axis 
needs more TLC to reach su successful works. First, take the example on your left. It's a simple circuit with a microchip and some components. We need to rethink the way we place our VS and our components and create a full simulation using CAD software. The simulation will have all the details that encompasses a finished product or a finished device. Then, when the CAD is complete, we move on to dealing with the actual print. The print requires a lot of attention, technique, and knowledge of what's going on. Because when you design your 3D CAD file, you need to consider all the parts moving in your 3D printer. Everything is a challenge when we talk about 3D printing. But the hardest thing right now is to make our models a reality. We have previously worked with CAD software, but here, while you were looking at a micro dispensing printer connecting electronics using silver ink, it wasn't easy. It took a lot of research to get to that point. Some of the challenges that we need to face are printing real small and still pushing the limit to get even smaller. The circuit that I'm showing you is something that I just designed and it has a 500 micron separation between the pins of its microcontroller. And right now it is a challenge just to print conductive lines that close and that small. On the other hand, the vias that span on all axes and going through materials with bends are very difficult to achieve using inks. Think about trying to paint using watercolors and one single hair as your brush. Sounds right. And sounds easy. <laughs> also, notice that this circuit doesn't have a ground plane. If we're moving away from designing electronics like a map and think more about creating electronics that resemble a tree, then we need to think how to incorporate ground planes to this problem. If we eliminate the ground plane, then we will have a transmission line that will work as a little tiny antenna and then we'll run into problems. One solution that you might want to consider is to use different types of transmission lines that will have its own ground plane incorporated. Just as a two-wire transmission line we studied earlier, we can use the concept and have one of the wires be in charge of sending the signal and the other wire be in charge of being the ground plane. This could work because the electromagnetic fields will be contained in that area as you can see in the simulation. On the other hand, we can use a coaxial cable. Coaxial cables are known to contain electromagnetic fields within their core and their dielectric. But then we run into big problems of how to manufacture these things. If we go with a two wire approach, we'll double the amount of lines that we need to do for our circuit. If we go with the coaxial, we have to have a method that prints everything in the coaxial at the same time, dielectric and metal. In conclusion, 3D printing is what we're looking to advance the technologies that you've seen in this class so far. Just taking the example of a microstrip transmission line shows that there is improvement and advantages to be achieved, but there are also challenges. I hope that you're encouraged to see what the future brings. I appreciate your time and please refer any questions to my email or ask Dr. Ruff, he's there for you.